lightnings and thunderstorms today with strong southwesterly winds to 37 miles per hour. It's a numbers game, especially for the situation that we're in. We're coming off of a high water event here. The outdoors is not a hobby. It's not our passion. It is our way of life. We make the perfect cast, slow our breathing to execute a perfect shot, spend hours researching locations and techniques. Regardless of effort, we fail. This series is not about incredible bites or trophy animals. Our goal here at Day One Outdoors is to educate our viewers, utilizing new technology to offer a different perspective. Watch as we research new areas, plan out the day, and adjust to changing conditions. If not for other experienced outdoorsmen teaching me along the way, I wouldn't have this life. I owe it to them to pass this knowledge along. I owe it to you. Join us here on Day One Outdoors, and let's learn how to become more successful in the field and on the water from day one. The big jigs for my Lakers. They all heavy? Yeah, they're just they're not nearly as heavy as yours. Oh, good. Okay. These. There's fog rolling in across the water here behind us like we're at the coast. There's snow on the higher elevations and we have a rain snow mix coming down and the wind's blowing like it's winter steelhead season. But it's June. But these are conditions that you need to deal with when chasing trophies here in the state of Oregon. We're out here with Todd Logan and we're chasing trophy Mackinac. Now there's only a few lakes here in the state of Oregon that have Mackinac, be it here at Odell, Coltis Lake or Crescent Lake tend to have the best populations. But just because there may be a lot of them in these leaks does not make it easy to catch them, as evidenced by the weather that we're dealing with here today in June. But we're squared up on a few fish. Todd just got us over here. We're gonna go ahead and get straight to fishing, see if we can't find some active fish first thing in the morning. The Oregon State record is a little over 40 pounds, and every time you come out here, you have a chance with one of those giants. Todd, you getting a little bit antsy? Yeah, they're, they're hunting pretty good down there at 100 feet, 120. So yeah, I'm ready to get a jig out there. All right, I'm getting going. <laughs> Quit talking, start fishing, got it. <laughs> Before you drop her down there. Put some juice on it? Yeah. All right, here you go. I'm gonna light her up. It's before six o'clock in the morning here right now, because yes, it is summertime, so the sun does come up early, even though we're surrounded by snow. <laughs> and we are fishing 100 feet down. I'm just gonna see if this will help get their attention a little bit. Jig fishing is very effective when the fish want to play. And so we're going to start by fishing jigs to see if these fish are active today or if we need to slow down our presentation. So in today's episode, what we're going to be talking about mostly, if the fish cooperate, is vertical fishing. Now we're going to do a part two to this series on how to troll for trophy lake trout. But today is all about jigs and bait fishing vertically. Let's see if we can get on our first fish right off the bat. Okay, good to go. Dropping her down. There's some active ones right there at 40 feet. And Todd, what type of jigging motion are we looking for here? I just pulse it. Not, not very aggressive. Here he comes. Eat it. So he's right. You can see where the two lines came together. He is right in my jig. So that's when I'll put it in gear. And so if he's not committing, Cody, that's when I'll, you know, I'll raise it up like, like it's trying to get away and then just stutter it on the way down. Seems to, be, seems to be good for me. And right there, he just committed. See him come shooting up there? And then he went back, now he's going back down. Come on, little buggers. Warm me up by biting. Come on.
course, now that I drop at 120, there's three swimming at 50. Yeah, I know. I was just looking at that too. <laughs> I'll come up. There they are. Oh, and here we go. And they're feeding on that school of coconut. This is your perfect Get them scenario. Down. Get them down. So Todd, you want to stop about 10 feet above them? Yeah. Okay. Yep. So I'm going to stop, I'm going to stop mine at 80 and then I'm just going to pulse it down to, you know, let it drop a foot to two feet at a time. So when they typically, I like to keep a lot, you know, feel the jig on my rod tip because all they're going to do is open their mouth and take it. And, and then you'll feel a, a slight thump, thump, thump. If you overrun your line with your rod tip, you'll see your line pull up on the, on the surface. And he, he's just sitting underneath your jig and when it falls, he just opens his mouth and, and takes it. So they're, those are the two different bites. Dude, one of us is bound. Got, oh, <laughs> know, he's, they're coming up and looking. Here he goes, here he goes. That's me at 97. Come on. <laughs> oh yeah, Todd's on. <laughs> yeah, buddy. <laughs> Took a while. Man, I had to coax that one. <laughs> so, you know, and this is where I can see that fish is right at 20 feet. So I'll just keep him on the rod and try, and try to get him to burp here. You can see right now that he's, he's starting to barrel barrel trauma so we really want them to burp and then they go they go down a lot easier if not we'll just we'll use the descending device so let him fight around here a little bit there's there he's burping that's what we want right there is all those get him normalized there This one here is running about eight pounds. A little bit smaller than what we're after, but we'll take him on this cold day. Nice warm up the blood. Well, that was our first fish of the day and it's a little bit undramatic, we'll say, just because we're so cold. But the reality is, is the fish are biting, which is good, and Todd, I bet your hands are actually a little bit warmer now since they were just in that water, because the yeah. water temp is over 50 and outside it ain't. Yeah, yeah, no, that water was a warm. Uh, there he goes. Yep, yep he's swimming on down. But when we uh, warm up maybe just a little bit more and we get into uh, maybe some bigger lakers too, we'll talk about the ethics of uh, catching these fish and the importance of having a descender device and talk about catch and release and, you know, these, these are, these are old fish, and Todd, you were the one who kind of informed me, and I started doing some research too. What is the life cycle of these fish? They, they say they grow to 30 inches in eight years. And after that, they only grow a half an inch to an inch a year, depending on their food source. And so, you know, some of those 40 inch fish that we're catching potentially be 35, 35, 36 years old. All Mackinac, all lake trout fisheries are very susceptible to overfishing because of their life cycle, because they have such a short growing period once they reach that 30 inch size range. And so, out here on these lakes, for the most part, the minimum length is 24 inches. But like Todd mentioned, when we're out here with customers, what we try and do is catch and release every single one of them. Now, every once in a while, you're gonna get one that isn't gonna be able to survive either through barrel trauma coming up from 100 feet down all the way up to the top. But more times than not, it's because you just got a hook in the wrong place. So in that case, we don't wanna waste the fish, we'll keep them. But like you mentioned, there are way better fish to eat. Lake trout are not the best eating. The better eating ones are the smaller ones, but even then, there's kokanee here. Well, we so, got a couple on the screen there. There's one actually looking at a school of kokanee, it looks like, possibly. Yep. Yeah. Oh, actually, no, that's my jig. Are you hanging? There. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that rod is going to barrel over. Yep. <laughs> so, hey, we're on the board. We yeah. see that they're moving a little bit. We're trying different colors, different profiles different jigs on that fish where you just barely moving your rod tip or where you give a little bit more aggressive? Nope, just barely pulsing it. Just okay. just kind of fluttering it, and, you know, up above him. Yeah. And, and he come up and I went to flutter it again. Rod was heavy. He was uh, already on it. He was. He had it. Yep. So. Okay, well it's my turn. I need to warm up. You got to warm up, <laughs> now I need to. Back to fishing. Fishfield is your one-stop shop online for the gear you need here in the Pacific Northwest and beyond. From salmon and steelhead 
salt water, trout and kokanee, even crabbing. Visit fishfield.com today to place an order with no sales tax and have the gear you need shipped fast. Fishfield.com, we have what the Northwest Outdoorsman needs. Every once in a while, a new lure comes along that catches every angler's attention. It could be because of all the irresistible colors and finishes, or the patented skip beat action, or maybe it's the wide variety of sizes designed for salmon, trout, walleye, steelhead, mackinaw, and more. But just for the record, we know one thing for certain. We didn't design the maglip to catch fishermen. Yakima Bait Company. Well, I guess it's only nine o'clock in the morning. We've been fishing for two and a half, three hours now, and guess what? It's still cold. There's still snow falling up along the tree lines above us. And we got the one fish on, on a jig, but what we're seeing is these fish are just doing a lot of chasing. They're coming up, looking, then dumping back down. They're coming up, looking, then dumping back down. We're getting our gear in front of a lot of fish. They're just not committing, whether we're fishing the herring or fishing the jigs. So anytime I'm trying to develop a pattern, First, you gotta find the fish. Second is presentation. We're gonna try and stick with jigs, but we're changing up our presentation with long jigs or just little short thumps to see if they will react better to one way or the other. The next is color and scent. So when these fish come up and look and they're not biting, it could be the profile, it could be the color, but I'm gonna mess around with scent here right now and see if that makes a difference. So what I'm gonna do first is add in some UV flash, just because we are fishing down 90 to 120 feet, so this should hopefully shine a little bit brighter down there for them and then next anytime i'm trying to elicit a response out of fish i go with what i call olfactory blockers so either anisent or in this case garlic really strong heavy scents really get their attention and you get that fight or flight reaction out of them so i'm going to add the uv flash and some garlic here to my fish field jig see if that makes a difference hopefully it does if not we need to keep on changing up color and scent and our profile of the bait until we figure out what they want to chew on time to load it up They are being lazy. He's slowly coming up. <laughs> there he is. Oh, gosh darn it. <laughs> He'll come back. <laughs> I had just the one push. It didn't even feel like a bite. It felt like he just came up and bumped it on this jig. Let's see, tolerable fishing guides. What are some good excuses? I would say a barometer. Harvest uh, moon. Uh, Harvest Moon, yep. Uh, let's see, last night it got down below freezing, it hasn't done that in a while, so that's probably why. Water temperature spiked. Yeah, yep. Uh, let's see, usually they bite around 10.30 to noon, so we're just not there yet. Exactly. Uh, a lot of boats on the water, that boat noise, you know, gets them, gets them buttoned down. Yeah, yeah I see five Start or six boats and at 100 them. feet, it just gets amplified. Yep, yeah, yeah, they can hear it. You know, yeah. you fire up your motor at Shelter Cove, they can hear it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Todd's getting us set up on another spot with some more fish, but I'm gonna go over some rod reel line tackle and what we're doing to fish vertically for these lake trout. So first off, what you're gonna to wanna to look for is essentially a salmon rod on about that eight to eight and a half foot length. You don't need a lot of length to get away from the boat, so really anything around eight foot will probably be just fine. The most important thing is a line counter reel. We are trying to get our gear right on top of these fish every time we mark them, so having a line counter is very important. So that way you can keep your gear within 10 feet of the fish at all times. Next, line. Braided line is a must for two reasons. First, it cuts down the amount of lead that you need to get down to the fish because it has thinner diameter. And two, it has more sensitivity so you can feel what's happening down at depth. From the braided line, we actually come down to a top shot and it's a, just a bumper line. And this section of the line here just goes from our yellow Maxima Braid 8 down to 20 pound Maxima Ultra Green. And the reason why we run this bumper is because this water is fairly clear. These are predators, they have good eyesight even down that deep. And so having a little bit of bumper with this Ultra Green to take away this laser beam of a yellow line up above them a little ways, I think is gonna help us catch a few more fish. So that's what we've seen here lately. So from there, we come down to our jig. Now we are running anywhere from a two ounce to a four ounce jig. 
And this one here is just a fish field jig that I built up with a hoochie and an anchovy body. And this is just supposed to imitate a kokanee. Very simple. And what we've seen is that a lot of times these Mackinac do like to see a little bit more motion than just say the swim bait by itself, which is why I added on the hoochie. If you've bought a fish before, fish for link cod, sea bass, this is essentially the exact same rig, very, very similar. And we're fishing deep, just like you do out in the ocean too, but we're fishing for a char, Mackinac, as opposed to sea bass and link cod. So this is the type of setup that we're running here for jigging. Now we're gonna talk about our bait rod, which is essentially the exact same setup as the jig, except for a couple of differences. Down in our terminal setup, instead of having just a snap swivel and a jig, we have a six ounce banana sinker. This here is a tornado banana sinker and it has that tornado chain swivel on the end. And what I like about that is that these are heavy duty and because we're running bait, the baits can be spinning quite a bit. So this helps take the twist out of, out of the line. From there, got our snapped on leader, which is again, 20 pound maximum ultra green and down to a mooching setup, just like what we use for salmon, except for one major difference, bigger hooks. We're running six and seven odd hooks. And the reason why is because we're using bigger baits. We're not running green label herring. We're running purple and black label herring. Big, big baits for these big, big fish. And instead of having two finger spacing, I have four finger spacing because again, we're running those baits that are eight, 10 inches long. That is our setup for bait. And so far we've had just the one fish on the jig nothing on the bait yet which is kind of surprising you'd expect them to definitely hit the bait but so far it's been just the jig hopefully we'll get them figured out well, there's one at 60 80. what we're trying to do here right now is pinpoint exactly where these fish are in the water column and that's where having electronics comes in really really handy and so what we're doing is I, I call it video game fishing so you find the fish on the screen use line counter reels that way you can put your gear right in front of their face so right now if you come over here and look and we mark this fish right here around 90 and that's the jig coming down put it right on the front of his face started jigging he started moving up so we reeled up it got in front of his face again. All this is really doing, this will never get the fish to bite, but what it will do is make sure that your gear is in the strike zone. These fish will chase a long ways. Even though we're fishing down 100 feet, they can see your gear about 15, 20 feet away. So it doesn't mean that you need to be, if the fish is at 110, you don't need to be at 110, just in the area. So that way they know that you're there. We, we just <laughs> decided to move. <laughs> I was like, all right, let's move. I grabbed it and I went like that and it goes whoo, locked up, pulled right out of his mouth. Oh, that figures. <laughs> Dodd's laughing at me. <laughs> we're getting them to chase. So we're just gonna see if they want to chase a little bit more. We were planning on doing this vertical fishing here today, but fish disagreed with our plan. So we're gonna try and mix things up. We only got two troll rods in the boat but we're gonna try those and see if that's what it'll take to get them to chew. So we're literally getting all the rods reset right now, clearing out rods, resetting everything. It's a bit of a cluster, but. <laughs> two men stepping over 50 rods at a time, is it a cluster? There's only two of us fishing, there's that's, 50 that's rods a, out here. That's not uh, oh, like a cluster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're gonna start trolling. See if that's what it's gonna take to get them to chew.
Salmon swim up to 3,000 miles to return to their exact place of birth to reproduce. Well, most of the time. Don't like trolling. <laughs> no, I have a strict rule. Not until July 1st will I put a trolling rod out. And here we are. June. June. <laughs> In the snow. Yeah. Todd's got us running lead lines, and this is something that is very, very common in the Great Lakes, but very few people do it out here. Well, we're going to give it a shot here. With all this cold, not many people are out on the water, so we have the opportunity to do it, and the fish aren't biting anything else. So we're going to slowly let 600 feet of lead core line down to the bottom, fishing little tiny U-20s. Maybe they just want a smaller presentation here today. Oh, oh, what was that? I think I just got bit. Probably. It's stupid. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there he is. I told you. Jeez, are you kidding me? Dude, it's oh. dumb. <laughs> Isn't that the most exciting bite ever? <laughs> so, Todd, you want to reel this one in? I don't. My hand hurts. <laughs> <laughs> He's all yours for the taking, here. Cody. You reel it in. You... <laughs> All right, so since we got 600 feet of line out, one, hard to tell when I got one on, but two, you know, we talked about earlier, we want to be as conscious as possible about bringing these fish up to avoid barrel trauma. It's just like scuba diving. We're fishing down 120 to 150 feet. You bring them up too fast and they'll get narked out. They'll get nitrogen narcosis. And we don't want that to happen with these fish since we're releasing them. So this guy's just a little one. And Todd, these are the ones that we were talking about that grow really quickly. Exactly. But once they hit about, what do you say, 25, 30 inches? 30 inches. Half inch a year. Yep, half inch to an inch a year, depending on the food source. And... There it is. It's your old school U20. Silver blue scale, just like a small little baby kokanee. And Todd, you like using these U20 is not anything any bigger like M2s. If they're not biting those, we will throw a bigger plug on, but that plug doesn't dive, doesn't dive enough to get into the weeds into the bottom. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's why it's so productive because it just rides up on top. Well, time to let this thing back out 600 feet. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Long ways to go. going you back well that's a better one. Oh boy he's pulling line <laughs> nice and done cool well your trolling is working bud <laughs> I know you hate it but I'd much prefer to catch them vertically too but they definitely just want smaller profile yeah all right there he is and saw look at the side of him there he's got some oh. marks all the way back here towards his tail too Almost like teeth. Now this fish we did pull up from 140. He's not doing too bad. His gills are flaring up. He's looking good, but I still think we should put that. Uh, yeah, put the sequelizer on him. So this is very commonly used for releasing rockfish out in the ocean. It has a setting on the back here for 50, 100, or 150 feet. And we got it set for 100 feet. And what this does is it repressurizes this fish's swim bladder and his entire system. and helps take some of the nitrogen out. So what I'm gonna do, is we're gonna clip this onto his mouth, just like so. Okay, he's clipped on there good. And Ton has the pull in his hands. And here he goes. Good luck, buddy. Yep, that's him. Locked in. Oh, lead line, really? I think you said this morning, the only thing I like better than being cold is fishing for Lakers on lead line. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll give you the cold and look at now. Give you the lead line. The 
plug that we said we wanted to change just caught the biggest fish of the day. Oh yeah. Oh, look at the size of that guy. <laughs> <laughs> <Dude>. <laughs> you know, Marlin guys, I learned this from them a long time ago. They always say elephants eat peanuts. This mid-teens fish just ate a U20 flatfish. A small little plug yeah. down 150 feet. What a tank. That's a, that's a good fish of the day right there. <laughs> so cool. <laughs> what a beast. Hey, Todd, you saved the day, bud. Yeah. You but, did. Uh, if, if we didn't have those I didn't want to. Rods, I know. We, <laughs> we fought. Both of us fought it. Yeah. If yeah, we didn't no. have those lead line rods, nah, we, we wouldn't have fish like this today. No, not today. And all it was was presentation. Yep. And uh, who knew that today was going to be, we came out here fully with the intent of catching fish on jigs and bait, fishing right. vertical. Yeah, the way we started can... the day, we're fishing vertical, uh, and the fish told us otherwise. Yeah, Fortunately, you brought those lead line rods because that has been our saving grace today. For the day. Yeah, for, for today. Sure. For we'll today. see what happens tomorrow, but for today, right. it helped. Yeah, it definitely uh, made the difference. I mean, you, you went from a one fish day. Yeah, to we had one fish. We had one fish, and that was in the first five minutes right. on that jig. Yep. And then nothing. It was what one o'clock when we yeah. finally switched over to lead lines. Yeah. In it the was. last hour and a half, we've had ten grabs and landed three or four. Right. It's yeah. that I mean, quick. Yeah. You know, I mean, we were laughing about it at the time. Yeah. But it's like you know, as soon as those get set down. <laughs> It's gonna, we're gonna no, double up. Guessing you. You're like, oh yeah, we'll get them. I'm like, we'll see. Today's yeah. a tough bite, we'll see. Right. <laughs> no, right. yeah. Yeah, we got them, okay. <laughs> yeah, it produced. <laughs>